Good evening. My name is Gert-Jan Hofstede, and I was asked to say something about emotions for the conference Closer to Emotion in Lublin. I would like to approach that question by using the four questions asked by Nico Pinbergen, Nobel Prize winner and biologist. About every biological phenomenon, he says, you can ask four questions. The function, what's it good for? The trigger, what makes it happen? The ontogeny, how does it develop in youth, and the evolution, how has it developed in evolutionary history? I will use those four sub-questions for the first question about emotions. What are emotions to me? So, first, the function. Well, they serve for relationship management with all the people who matter to us, whether imaginary or real people. Could be God, for instance, and you can argue whether that's a real somebody or not. So it's relationship maintenance or change. You get emotions to get you ready to action for that. Second sub-question, the trigger, what makes it happen? Something hits our mind about a relationally important event that either is about to happen or might happen. Uh, our girlfriend may run away with another ma male and we get viciously jealous. Or it has just happened or we think it has happened or we realize that it will never happen. So the emotional realization of that fact. Third sub-question, the ontogeny. How does it develop in youth? And this is where culture is relevant because we learn how to feel emotions and when to feel them from the examples given to us by our parents. Of course, there's a, a general human core. Nobody likes to be left alone. You have violent emotions about that when you're a child. but are you supposed to be sleeping alone in your own room, in your own bed, for instance? Or will you always sleep in the bed with your parents or only with your mother and your father is never there? These kind of things prime what we have emotions about. Uh, are our parents afraid of foreigners or not? That's important for our feelings towards them as well. So emotions are primed in youth. And this is actually what forms culture because we don't live alone. We live together with other people in a country. The fourth sub-question, the evolution of emotions. I can be brief here. They have been essential for group survival. Imagine a society of autistic people who don't feel social emotions. They would not survive for long. They would not even get to the next generation. So that's the first of the questions asked of me. The second one is about research methods. Well, here I am very liberal. I would say let a thousand flowers bloom. There's only one caveat. Actions speak louder than words. If you ask people for their own emotions, you might get strong taboos or desirability biases. But I think all experimental researchers know these things. Letting, showing, or having people act and seeing what they do will be more powerful. Simulation gaming could be a way to do that. You cannot really hide your emotions when you play uh, simulation gaming acts, but many people might be afraid of doing that because of the emotions that will be apparent in a play. Third sub-question, what is my own experience about emotions? Well, I would say emotions are vital. For instance, recently for a scientist, uh, Google citations has become very, very important and all these individual level indicators of how important you are, the pecking order, this has changed my life. I would never be uh, bothered much, much about these things, but now I have to. And the most vicious emotion, I would say, is not feeling perceived. Having the feeling that people are not paying attention you, to you, that nobody sees what you do and how good you are. And with that, I would like to wish you a very successful conference. Goodbye from the Netherlands.